Hey everybody, it's Anjanette from AJ's Books. How are you doing? Um, this, welcome back to my subscribers and welcome in to anybody new. Sorry, I'm not feeling the best today. It's one of those um, heat advisory days. Whew, got today's, tomorrow we're supposed to have a heat index over 110. Today it's going to be up close to that. So um, yeah, I'm not feeling the best right now. I'm having stomach issues on top of it, and I'm just praying I'm not getting sick, that it's just the heat, and that it's the car ride yesterday. I had appointments down in Indy, and it was just terrible with all the construction and with the heat and not being able to have, you know, the air really feel like you had air on in, in the car. And the much noticeable difference when you didn't have it on, but it just didn't feel like it was on. There was just so much construction, and we got within two minutes of the hospital, and we were in the middle of a huge traffic jam due to construction. And the light that we were at waiting to turn it onto the main road of the, high, of the hospital, it took us over 20 minutes of stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. I was doing okay, and then bam, in about half of, in about 10 minutes, and I got a massive migraine, and it went from just being a migraine to wanting to curl and nowhere to get sick if if my body decided to take that route and so I just sat there and took deep slow breaths and I had to call to let them know because there's only a 15 minute window and um, because of this mess you know that you would think if it's that congested they would let people know because it has to have been that way for a while now with the way they're doing the construction and um, the lady was like, well, we're going to have to reschedule you if you're not here within 15 minutes. So that on top of everything. And I'm like, we are literally two minutes away, but we're stuck in this traffic jam pileup due to construction that we didn't know about or we would have left even earlier. I was like, we're always always half an hour early we are never just on time for the appointment there we are always a half an hour early so it finally broke up and we realized you know i was going to get there just i was literally two minutes under the 15 minute deadline and i we told us we're going to make it now so we hung up with each other because she couldn't get through to the front desk person, you know, when you call and you get a separate place that does all the scheduling, she was trying to get to the front desk to let them know and to see if there was any possibility of me seeing the doctor and blah, blah, blah. I knew pretty well that he would get me in because I know how he is, but they had started this policy, so I didn't know for 100%. And I'm like, I'm having surgery next week. I need to have my my um, pain pump filled big time. Not that it's going to help with the pain from the surgery, but I still, I needed to have it filled now thinking that, you know, recovery time and that I know I have at least, you know, three months after a fill before I have to be in for another one. So that's what I was thinking. The, the longest time out is the best. And it just so happened that when we found out the day that it was a week after my fill. So it was like, okay, perfect. Actually a day less than a week. So I get there. They said the lady called and my doctor told me, he said, don't worry about it. He said, as long as you're here within three hours of your appointment, I will get you in because you're always here early. You're always or on time. He said, we know that you're coming from a distance and you do the best that you can to be here. He said, don't worry about it. We'll get you in. 
So, yeah, I love him. Anyway, I am here because I have some yarn to show. And this is not one of the couple of videos that I told you I was going to try to get in this week. Unfortunately, my cow video may be late. Um, not because we're not going to get them done, but because I just don't know if I'm going to have time to film it. And it's one that I can show you my project and then show you the pictures of the other projects. It's just I know um, some of the ladies are waiting to show you um, what they did. But I'm sure they'll be fine waiting a little bit longer. Got the picture from one person. I need to get it from another one who's already finished. And um, I need to remember to ask her. And then the two of us who are still working on it because we pretty much only work on it during Cal time. You know, which you can work ahead of it, but it's just nice, you know, because that's our time that we take a break. The whole reason I'm trying to do smaller projects is it gives you time to take a break from your bigger projects. Right now I have a break from like all of my projects. I'm unfortunately not gonna get the moose done because I'm still waiting on the yarn to get here, uh, which is supposed to be here I think tomorrow. And um, yeah, I'm just not gonna have time to get it done. So I'm gonna have to get a hold of the lady. I'm gonna give her a, a huge price break. I mean, she's a friend anyway. I was planning on giving a friend from school. I was planning on giving her a certain price break, but going to let her know that with it, the yarn not being here yet, I'm not going to be able to finish anything after surgery. And hopefully I'll be able to start crocheting earlier than I'm thinking. But even after seeing my dietitian yesterday, she's like, honey, this is going to be so hard on you. So yeah, I, I don't, I'm expecting the worst and hoping for better. I'm going into it with a positive attitude. But I have learned along the way, if I hope for the worst, then whatever the outcome is, I am prepared for. So, but I go in, even though I am like expecting the worst, I, I guess hoping for the worst is the wrong way to put it. I expect the worst, but I go in with a positive attitude that it's going to be the best thing ever. So, um, yeah, that way, if I come out and it, it's not the best thing ever, I'm still prepared for the worst. So that's what I meant to say. Um, I'm trying to keep myself upbeat and excited. I'm having such stomach issues. And I know, like I said, it started with that yesterday and my migraine Right now, my medicine has put it down so I can do this, but it has just been pounding and the heat is just making it 10 times worse. And I woke up with it just a dead on. Yeah. For those of you who knew that we were hoping to get a lift chair, meet my new chair I love. We got it put together the night before last. Since we were going to India yesterday, I kind of slept on it the night before. I was having a hard time sleeping. Um, but what little sleep I got was here on the chair. Last night, Kalu and I cuddled up on the chair and I slept here all night. It's very comfortable. So, and plus, my room is one of the hottest rooms in the house. And even with a fan on me and with my migraine, there was no way. So I slept in here because even though it's the room that has our air conditioner in the window, which is not keeping the room cooler than what is at 73, I think it's saying up there. So um, normally at the rate that it's on right now, it keeps us at a 69.70, which I'm in here freezing, but I'm comfortable with this on right now. Later on, it's gonna feel warmer, so. Anyway, with all of that said, I came to show you yarn. This is Mesa Skein yarn. I was not expecting to make a purchase, but she's going to start um, dyeing on a whole new base. And so she decided to put everything else on sale at $19.99 a skein for hand-dyed yarn. Um, hello 
She normally charges $31.99. She had taken it down and put it all on sale for $26.99. And that's everything. That's her cashmere base. It's everything is $19.99. It was supposed to be a weekend sale only, but I have been on there and looked and she is extending it. Um, I happened to fall at a time that I had just a little bit of money, which I was thrilled about because I've been wanting this colorway for a long, long, long time. Her grandfather passed away this last spring. Her mother passed away a year before that. Her grandfather made it, I think, only a little over a year past her grandma's passing. Um, she made a memorial colorway for her grandma, and I just fell in love with it because, one, it has yellow in it. But two, as I wrote her on her video yesterday, I loved it because it's a memorial for her grandma. So I wanted it from the first time I saw it. But two, it has my favorite color yellow in it. Three, it's a mashup of me and my grandma, who I miss dearly, who passed away 10 years to the day of her posting the video that I was watching. Um, she posted it on the 10th. As you guys know, I'm behind. I'm way behind. But my grandma died on the 10th, 10 years ago this year. So. It reminds me of my grandma. Her favorite colors and my favorite colors all put together. And you guys know, I like more than one color. But when I see my grandma's favorite colors too, it's not exact her favorites, but it's some of them like dusty blue, dusty rose, hands down. My grandma's two favorite colors, dusty rose on top of dusty blue, but any blues and purples and she really, well, I could show you the yarn. I also got minis of another one. The minis are no longer available. Half the stuff that was on there over the weekend is not available. And she said when she was doing the $26.99 sale, she's not dyeing her new base until she's gotten rid of everything because she needs the room. So I don't know how much of everything is left on there, if there's any cashmere left in her colorways, but I looked before coming on and the one that I got that was the memorial to her, her ground is called Nanny's Favorite. It's still on there. The mini skeins I got are all gone. I'm not surprised because if I remember right, I got either six or eight of them. Six of them. Is what I, got. Um, I couldn't afford the eight. It took me over the money that I had. So um, these are all fingering. She had some um, DK weight left. I don't know if she had any... Much, how much of worsted she may have had left. But let me tell you, every color she has left are colors that I have wanted really badly. This one I've just wanted more. Um, I love her work. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard of her in my videos before. She's the one that I did a, a sample for. I am one of her VIPs on Patreon. So I should know about everything early, but I don't because of being behind. Uh, I love, I didn't realize she did that on the, um, um, she always puts one of her stickers in, but on the tag of this one, that's called Nana's Favorite. Is that right? Oh, not Nana's, but Nanny's Favorite. She has a picture of her nanny. Gorgeous, gorgeous woman who used to come on the videos with her. So we all kind of got to know her a little. I mean, not a lot. She would come on and show um, when um, Macy would make her something. Macy loved to make her tops. Um, like she does for her mom too. But um, 
And actually, I think she may be wearing one of Macy's tops that she made her in this picture. But anyway, everything is still 1999. Um, this is this beautiful colorway is a tribute to my beautiful grandmother, Nanny. Look at that. I mean, I hope you're seeing it okay. I turned out this light over here because I thought it might be better, but I'm thinking I may try to turn it on. See, well, not try, but turn it on. See if you can see it better. Oh, that's a little better. I was thinking it would be worse, but it's yellow. The main base is that light yellow, and then you just have all these colors. And when you look at it online, this one shows a little bit more green, but in different places it will come out looking blue, which is why I really loved it because, you know, that was one of my grandma's. Oh yeah, down here especially. Down here reminds me of my grandma so much because it's got the blue into the purple. I'm going to take it out and hang it for you so you can just see the beautifulness of this yarn. And plus, so I can see, I was so excited. I was like, I have to show you guys because this is going up. I mean, I'm putting everything away anyway. So this is going up into my, um, I have a, I have shelves that have doors on the front that I had in my um, massage office. And that's where I keep all of my hand dye and all of my um, knit crate and other special to me, maybe not hand dyed, but special to me um, yarn that I love. And, and all of my little baby weight yarn is in there. Well, not all of it, most of it, I should. Look at that. Look at that, the blues, the pretty teals into blues, and then the splotches of the orange and the red makes it also have pinks and then purples. Oh, just look at this right here. You can see lots of purple in there. I just love it. I absolutely love it. I will tag Macy in this. Macy, you are you are brilliant as far as I'm concerned. I mean, she literally watched people doing hand-dyed yarn and thought, I want to do that, learned how to do it, and that's what she does. And she does it well, very well. If I'm going to buy hand-dyed, I will get it from Macy. If I, especially if I can afford to get more than one, and I always look because she does, um, you'll see if you go on to purchase anything, you will see that she um, she does a mix, misfit, misfit sale. And I don't know if that's what she has it called on there right now. But she had those hanks on sale for um, $19.99 already. And I think she calls them dealer's choice is what she and I've done like a mystery bag that I showed you before. And I was so pleased because one of the colorways I had wanted forever, which was the Marigold colorway, which she has available. Um, that was in there. And I got that along with two of my other favorite colorways, which was Sunday and Tulip. And she has both of those available too. Tulip has ended up being one of her, as she was saying in her last video, one of her top three um, colorways that has put her name out there. And um, yeah. I just love Macy to piece it. And as I said, for all of those that follow me, you know that. But I also love Chemnitz. Um, I've been watching her because I have done some dyeing of my own and I plan on doing more. Um, I wanted to this summer, but with my surgery coming up, I haven't had time because I'm so busy in the back room. So like my husband is happy to tell everybody, we have um, brought down the contents of our house by 50% in the last couple of months. That's how much work we've been doing. 
So even though he hasn't been able to help me in the back room, it's because he doesn't know where to put my yarn right now. And the yarn has to get put up before anything else can finish getting done back there. And the other part has to do with my bedroom. And I can't put stuff away in my bedroom right now because my bedroom has things of clothes that I was going to put up for sale on Posh. Poshmark? Yeah, on Poshmark. That I never put up because once we knew I was going to have this surgery, it's like, I don't want to get rid of all this small, the smaller um, sizes that don't fit me. And because of the skin, we never thought was going to fit me. Well, now they may end up being too small. So every piece of clothing in my room may have to go except for the things that because they're so big, they look like, you know, they'll look like a dress and I can put, um, you know, like leggings on underneath them. Oh, I'm going to so look forward to being able to wear leggings again because I couldn't wear them because I didn't have enough to get over the skin in my stomach. So I have some back there that I'm hoping aren't too big for me because I bought them hoping they would fit me before. And um, they have a come on, Clue. Come on. Come on. There you go. Clue was afraid of this chair when it first came in. So um, she doesn't just jump on me anymore. She sits down there and cries at me. So it's not just because I'm on line. It's because she's still getting used to having this chair around. For a little bit, we're going to have to get a spray to spray on the back because she's trying to scratch on it. So now the mini skates I got these right here. I'm trying to remember what these were called because the name is not, let me see if it's on here. I know she doesn't have any of these left. The ones I was telling you about that she had for $19.99 where right, you pick the size and she will send you something that, you know, it's called dealer's choice right now, but not mystery this or mystery that. It's called dealer's choice, which right now you can go on and pick out whatever color or way that you want. But if you want her to make the decision you can go on the dealer's choice and I think some of them in dealer's choice are ones that were what she would consider misfits that she didn't think were well enough to put up for sale but are still beautiful they just have a couple little you know dying differences in them so I've had one of her she, um at Christmas time a couple years ago she had ones that were called misfit toys and I got her reindeer games, which was one of the first colorways to go out at when she put these down to $19.99. And I absolutely love it. And I don't think she's planning on bringing reindeer games back for a while. Um, but I hope sometime in the future, because I was hoping to get some more at the same weight that I bought, because I would love to have a top or a short sleeve sweater or something in it um, for winter time around Christmas would be nice. She has one right now that's called Sven that um, is named after the reindeer from, um, I think that's the name of the reindeer. And um, I, I don't know if it's actually because of the reindeer now that I think about it in um, Frozen, but it's, she was going through looking for inspiration last Christmas and she found this picture of an, an elk or a reindeer, I think it's it maybe a reindeer. She shows the picture um, and it's just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous brown. Oh, I'd love to have a sweater in it. It's, it's so gorgeous. I wish I had the money to buy hand dyed yarn and that I could support her in that way. I support her more in Patreon right now, um, which she used to give a monthly coupon. Right now with all of her sales, she's not giving coupons. But when she has special events, she will normally give us a coupon that we can use at them. Like when her yarn's going to be up in a trunk sale or something, she will give us a coupon code that we can use at that event too. Um, so she tries to, you know, be very generous to us. And plus, you can only be a sample maker for her if you are part of her Patreon. So these are called poker chips. So if you know anything about Macy, she calls herself Mace of Spades. And so then like all of her bases have the name of, you know, clubs, um, spade, hearts, and um, oh my goodness, diamonds. <laughs> 
So these are called poker chips. And I loved the blues in here so much. And I was like, you know, it'd be nice to have a whole um, skein. So I think she doesn't have them marked. So I'm thinking these are 20 grams a piece because I know she's done 20 grams minis before. They look bigger than 10 grams. I've seen 10 grams and I'm pretty sure they're 20. So that's why I got six because then I have 120. And I have a friend who loves these colors. So she may be getting one of them. I'd love to give these out to prizes to everybody or for all, you know, put them aside for my prizes and my prize box. I just can't. I love this colorway so much. I know I'm going to lose some though in whatever I make. 100 grams isn't gonna make a whole lot, but this could be a stripe in something if I use a different color along with it. So these are also fingering. I know the base that I did in this one is the spade base. Um, and I believe, see if she has her written on here, I should have looked and of course I did not. Where did I put, I wonder if I had a cat. I just realized I hanged this up and I didn't put the sleeve back on it. Let me pause because I'm not seeing it right here. I think I may have had a cat who, oh, no, it's just on the other side of Kalua. When she sits on the arm, I can't see the other side of her. So this, her spade base, is 75% um, superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it has 463 yards, 100 grams. I picked this one because it had a little bit more yardage than her other fingering weight, because um, I almost got her other one, uh, which I wanna say might be her club base. I almost said diamond, but I, I think it may be her club base. And I know the club is one of them that's being changed. She's going to a company that's more environmentally um, friendly, which I think is amazing. Um, and plus she says the yarn is so much squishier. So of course this is hand washed dry flat. These I don't have any specs on except for it is the spade base as well. So if I wanted to, I can make something with this as the main color and the stripe in this, which would work with the colors in here. I just don't know if I want to do that. It's not what I was thinking of when I bought it. Um, but we'll see. I will figure out. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with any of my hand dyed yarn right now. I know what I do with the yarn that I hand dye. I make spe a special gift that I might like to make for all my special friends, which you're one out of my group of one, two, one, two. Six to seven special people that I talk to all the time, and you will know who you are. You're going to get one of these gifts in the nearer and farther future. Um, you're the next people on my list to make them for. I just haven't had a chance. I really hope that I would have them done for this Christmas, but with the surgery coming, it has debunked so many things I planned on doing this year, but in a happy way. So I hope that you guys can forgive me for that and they will be coming. Actually, I need to add another person to that. So nine, actually possibly 10 people. I, I just have people, 12, <laughs> and if I keep thinking, the list will keep growing. So I need to sit down and handwrite my list of, and then just start making them and going down the list. But thank goodness it's something that doesn't take too long to make, but it does take a little bit of time. So anyway, I'm going to go. I got to go. I have somebody calling me in about a half an hour who... I went to college with, and she was like my big sister, and um, we're going to get to know each other again after all these years, and I can't wait. I have missed her so much. One thing I did, 
that I really regret now, but at the time it felt like I had to. You guys know my history. I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit longer. Um, most of you know my history. I don't know if any new people don't, and I'm sorry if you don't like what I have to say. I've had good response for those who already know, but I have lost friends because of this. So if I lose subscribers, then I lose them. I very sorry. I would, I hate to see you go, but I also have decided to make my, you know, live my life open and honestly. I hit it for years while I was massaging the people who needed to know knew and you know we all had to follow HIPAA so it didn't matter because I followed HIPAA and if I was sick or you know cut myself or whatever I just didn't you know I canceled and rescheduled so you guys really don't need to know all that part but just for those who may be like, oh, I didn't know that about you. Um, I have found that almost everybody that I talk to in this community is amazing and heartfelt and heartwarming, but I have met some who are not. So if this makes you leave, I'm not going to say sorry. I'm going to say, well, that was meant to be then but I hope not and that you all are just as compassionate as everybody else that I've gotten to know because I truly love all of you. When I say I love you, I, I do. I love all of you even though I don't know all of you. And when I say I want to get to know as many of you as I can, I honestly mean that. And if anybody has written me in the last month, month and a half, I apologize. I am way, way behind on emails. I mean, emails from anybody, from bills for, you know, my medis my medical things and stuff. I had to take care of one yesterday because I didn't see it and I was way past due. Anyway, again, I digress. I always over explain. So for those of you who are new, I'm sorry. That I will say I'm sorry for. I'm trying to get better with that. I lost track of everybody that I went to college with and that I was close to because as some of you know, I flunked out of um, pharmacy school because I got to the point I was extremely tired, exhausted, I couldn't think straight, I needed to take a lot more breaks. I was already a procrastinator and it just made things worse. My apartment was a mess. I had stuff everywhere because I just didn't have the energy to do anything. You know, as we found out later, not until I was 45, I had chronic pancreatitis and it was due to a birth defect that had not been caught until I was 45. So that was part of it. But then put on top of it that we found out after I came home that I was HIV positive. Unfortunately, I fell in love with and got engaged to, as some would say, the wrong man who I loved him so much that I can't truly say he was wrong. Just that, you know, God puts things in your path and you just need to deal with it. Not saying that God made me sick, but because I don't believe God made me sick. I just think that my life went the way it was supposed to, to lead me back to him. Um, anyway, I came home. I moved in with a friend. She had a room that I rented and I got tested. This was, well, this was after I had moved in with her. I ended up moving in with somebody else who was a friend of my mom who needed help because her mom had Alzheimer's. And so I would help take care of her and her two kids because they just got a divorce. And, um, but anyway, I had gotten really sick after I moved in with my friend and I had a temperature of 103. 
I was working at McDonald's and at the time our main manager had gotten sick with meningitis and they could not afford to give me the time off. So I literally sat in the front booth and told everybody what to do because I had a crew that was amazing and they could take care of themselves. And that's the only reason I agreed to doing that. That and I was afraid of losing my job and I needed my job. So I sat there and died. And then I had a couple days off once they could get, you know, let me take the time off. My doctor was done, didn't know what was wrong with me. Told me he tested me for everything. And at the time I thought he tested me for HIV because it was so prominent at the time. It was 1992. Actually, this may have happened in 91. I moved home in 91. Um, just upset because I flunked out of what I thought was going to be my life's path. Um, turns out that it's a good thing because if I would have stayed at that level of stress, it would have killed me. Pharmacy is a lot, a lot of stress. Let me tell you, I don't ever take stuff out on the pharmacist unless they are lazy and not doing their job, which I happen to know if that's how they are from being a pharmacy tech, pharmacy tech for a very, very long time, from before I went to college, two years after I came home. Um, anyway, I digress again. I got really sick. My doctor brought in another doctor to look at me. I didn't think it was HIV, wasn't even on my radar anymore because I thought he had tested me for it. I got better finally, took me a while. I had a boyfriend who did not understand, still insisted to see me even while I had a temperature of 103. Um, I finally told him after I'd moved in with my mom's friend and things had always been bad. He always, he, he wasn't violent with me, like he didn't hit me and stuff, but he made me feel that nobody else would ever love me, especially because of my weight. And at the time, I was a lot bigger than I am now. Um, I wasn't at my biggest, but I was a lot bigger. I ended up, my, my largest was like 340 to 350 pounds when I went in for my first weight loss surgery. So, um, but everybody always told me, oh, you don't look, you know, that big. And even now when, you know, people say that but with icy pictures, I just see all that loose skin area. And I'm like, yeah, from here up, I don't look what I weigh, but from there down, yeah. But they're thinking that I have anywhere from 30 plus, well, 20 plus pounds, which we will find out on Monday. So when they take it off um, of excess skin. Anyway, when I came home, I cut off all ties from everybody in college. I didn't want sympathy and I didn't want number one to lose everybody who I considered an amazing friend. So instead, I cut them all off. I have one who was my best friend ever. And even though we've reconnected on Facebook, she still does not talk to me. And I've written her long things and explaining. She'll give me a word here or there. She's very busy. She's a pharmacist now. She has a family. She had been in and out of the hospital for problems after giving birth to her son for a while. So, if you... I don't think she subscribes to me, but if you ever happen to see this, Kathy, I love you so much. And it's so funny because, or no, Karen, wow. I was going to say it's so funny because she's got the same name as one of my best friends now, but it's Karen. I know that. <laughs> I was just talking to Kathy, so I've got Kathy on the brain. Anyway, while chatting with her. I love you guys. That's why I'm telling you all of this, but... That's why today's call is so important to me because I have not talked to her in forever. And she was like my sister and she graduated before 
I came home. Um, I was there for three years. I got put on academic probation during the second year, which is when I knew her and she helped me through so much depression. I had gotten my own room. I had a single room on the um, floor where her and I lived on the side and we just got to know each other so well. And I'm so looking forward to talking to my friend because I can mend the bridges for her and I, which are not really bad bridges because, you know, she was in the process of getting married and everything when I came, you know, home. It's just that I lost track. I, you know, I think I, the last center I, last letter I sent her because we used to write each other, you know, handwritten letters. <laughs> and, um, I, I don't know if she got it because I never heard back from her. And, um, I know she wasn't the type not to write back. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. I love all of you. Remember you matter no matter what you matter and i will talk to you all later you are beautiful you're gorgeous i love you later